Good morning, Sheila. How are you? I'm great today, Wayne. How are you? I am doing well, thank you. And it is a lovely day outside. It's not hot and it's not cold. It's great. It's, it's so unusual for us. <laughs> it is. And welcome, everyone, to 27 Minutes with Sheila and Wayne, where we explore the fascinating world of verbs and their impact on our daily lives. Join us each week as we delve into the different ways verbs shape our language and influence our activities as we attempt to make a positive difference in our world, one verb at a time. And Sheila, what is our verb for today? Today's verb is to remind. Ooh. And yeah, and I uh, have a trivia question, a very silly trivia question. Oh, really? Uh, yes. And have you one as well? I have a general question, not right, a trivia question. Let's hear yours first. And as always, we will ask the question at the beginning of the show and answer it at the end of the show. Okay. So start with yours. And I know we have a lot more, but what are 10 ways to remind yourself to do something? Okay. All right. And yours? Mine is, what system did I come up with as a child that I still use today to remind myself of things? Ooh. That's a very silly question. So, okay. Okay. Now. All right. And and how did how did our how can our listeners find you to oh. give us compliments or hey <laughs> choose a verb? <laughs> Thank you, uh, Zeke and Sheila at Yahoo dot com. And I can be contacted at Wayne at mindsinking dot com, and that's spelled M I N D S Y N C I N G dot com. <laughs> Thank you. And, and what kind and what kind of definitions did you come up with? That I have two here. One okay. is to cause someone to remember someone or something. And the second one is to bring something to the attention of someone, like a commitment or a necessary course of action. Ah, all right. And I have three. And this was this was very the, the definitions were very lean this time. Uh -huh. The first one was to make someone think of something they have forgotten or might have forgotten. Mm -hmm. My second one to make someone aware of something forgotten or possibly forgotten, or to bring back a memory to someone. And my last one, to put in mind of something, cause to remember. <laughs> and your initial thoughts on the verb remind when we pulled it out of the gelato jar last <laughs> week. <laughs> I was kind of neutral on it, but as I started researching it, I found it to be a really easy verb and I found some fun things about it. Oh, fun. Uh, nice. Well, I can't wait to hear those fun things. Okay. And my initial thought was, wow, this could be a great source of information for those who are, who find themselves juggling many tasks in yeah, the air. Good yes. point. Which because is pretty much everyone these days, isn't it? It is. And I was particularly thinking about event planners, project managers, mm. executive officers, speakers, writers, teachers, and the list goes on. Mm -hmm. And ironically... I have dabbled in many of those positions that I just listed, mm -hmm. and I I had to devise a tool to help me. And I'm interested to hear what your trivia question is because I <laughs> I came up with a tool, it not so sophisticated tool with all the technology that's out there. But when mm -hmm. I was growing up, the technology wasn't there. Right. So, <laughs> so my sophisticated technology was nothing more than a spiral notepad with a short with the shorthand that I created oh, so that I could look at it at a glance and tell what was next, what was missed and what was to be, to, to be done and what was to come. And it worked for years. And I must have about, I must've had about hundreds of those. Wow. Things. Yes. Ha. Anyway. So where did you go? Where did your research take you? Well, it took me, my research took me to other research. And so I've got, I'm going to talk about the first one here. Um, these build on each other a little bit. So this one was done in 2016 and was reported in the JAMA, uh, Internal Medicine Journal okay. of, mm, I've forgotten what JAMA is now off the top of my head. So excuse me for that. But they were studying types of reminder devices and how effective they are at reminding people, especially those who have uh, multiple uh, challenges, physical challenges, help to remind them to take their medication. So hmm. this particular trial was called the effect of reminder devices on medication adherence, the, and it was called the Remind Randomized Clinical Trial. So very easy to find this one because it's all about remind. So they used <laughs> three low-cost reminder devices 
They had 53,480 enrollees, which is a huge wow. population to study. So that these is. were folks who were all part of a, um, a health organization. Um, and the three low-cost reminder devices were a pill bottle strip with toggles that you move aside to say, yes, I took the medication today. You ah. slide that little toggle back and forth. A digital reminder cap that displayed the last time you took the dose. And the third one was a standard pill box, where, okay. which has one compartment per day. So the conclusion they came to, and again, these were folks who had multiple medical issues. Yes. The conclusion they came to was low-cost reminder devices do not improve adherence. <laughs> <laughs> Almost worthless. They call that the null finding. It was there was no impact. No so, impact. Okay. Right. So these again were people who were taking up to three medications to treat common chronic conditions. So that was the first study, and we'll go to you, and then I'll talk about the second study. Okay. Well, and as I was looking at this, and as I was talking about my spiral notepads, um, and then I was thinking, why? The obvious question, you know, why do we might we? Why do we need to be reminded? And I thought, you know, hey, surely I can remember all the things I need to do. No, no, that's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Me, I cannot. No. And, and so I thought of pilots and no matter the oh. vehicle, whether it was a be an airplane, big ones or little ones, or helicopters or jets or spacecraft, or even those individuals or groups that assist in the launch recovery of those vehicles, um, most of them if not all of the pilots, use a checklist during preparing the aircraft, takeoff, and landing, as not to forget anything for the safe operation at the appropriate time. You know, it would not be cool if they were landing and somebody forgot to put the landing gear down. That is true. <laughs> you know, so not right. cool. Not cool. And, and I also remember that I worked with um, disaster preparedness guys a while, and they always had to use, and they always use the proper checklist for the appropriate event happening in front of them. And from as simple as a checklist as power out, power outages to major disasters. And I talked about the proper checklist because I learned something very quickly while working with them. Mm -hmm. um, each checklist that they had, and it was a no, it was a notebook actually, that they would pull, it had, it started off with phone numbers, who to call, and who to wake up first at three o'clock in the morning. And as they showed me, be, depending on what the disaster or the event was, you didn't have to call the same person each time, first, second, or third. And so the proper checklist, <laughs> the first thing in their checklist as they pulled the, the three wing binder from the shelf, <clears throat> they open it and says, confirm proper checklist. And, <laughs> <laughs> and it said, power outages, and we're looking at the event, it's a tornado. Obviously, that's the wrong checklist. <laughs> <laughs> so they had them all labeled, you know, for power outages, tornadoes, wow. flooding. It was, it, was, it was very, very cool and very, yeah. very educational to me. Anyway, so I went to the net, like I always do, and I found an article that I thought, hey, this is pretty cool. And it's called The Importance of Reminders and How to Make a Reminder Work. Mm -hmm. And it's written by Dustin Wax. And this is off of lifehack.com. And it says, he said, no matter how well you set up your to-do list and calendar, you aren't going to get things done unless you have a reliable way of reminding mm -hmm. yourself to yep. actually do them, right? Right. Yes. And so I said, ooh, okay, Dustin, what kind of reliable ways do you have for us? And then he kept going. He said, anyone who's spent an hour writing up the perfect grocery list only to realize <laughs> when they get to the store, they forgot to bring the list. And they're done that. <laughs> and so he had to have a reminder to remind himself to bring the list that he was reminding himself of the things he needed to get. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I, I've done that too. Yeah. Um, he said, fortunately, there are ways to make sure that we remember to check our lists and remember to do things that we need to do. Um, because he says, whether they're on a list or not, in most cases, we need a lot of pushing at first. Mm -hmm. For example, by making a reminder, but eventually we build up enough momentum that doing what needs to be doing is a habit and not an exception. And he basically said or suggested, so when I'm going to the airport, 
I'm going to put my suitcase in front of the door. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. so as I'm going out the front door, I have to grab the suitcase to open the door um, to get out of the door. And there's a reminder there. <laughs> Do you have everything in your suitcase that mm -hmm. you need? And mm -hmm. don't forget the suitcase. <laughs> right. That was kind of cool. And where did you go? Well, my next study was done in 2020. The last one was 2016. And you'll see that technology has improved now uh -huh. in 2020. And this one is the study was called Voice Assisted to Remind Pharmacological Treatment in Elders. And oh. so Manuel Jesus Azabel et al. did this. They're using artificial intelligence now as a voice assistant. The premise of this study was that they expect the aging Europe, European population to be a, to to end up with about half of the population over the age of sixty five in the next decades. That's really? huge. That's huge. It is. Now I don't know if that trend is still going on, but uh, specifically, those elder seniors would have multiple uh, medication needs and would be probably dealing with solitude or neglect issues. That's a problem today with elders, and it certainly was back then. So the solution they introduced was uh, using a voice assistant that reminds people about daily doses using a, a non-internet-based system. And I looked up autonomous systems that don't need internet use, and quickly the language became over, got over my head. So I, <laughs> uh -oh. I can't, I can't, they did, um, the the technology they used was testing something called Smart Prompt. And I looked up Smart Prompt, an app to see if it's uh, available and it is not. So they were still studying it. But basically Ooh, okay. what they found was uh, that it was very helpful for the elders. Uh, but I have a hunch it wasn't just that it was a reminder that made sense. I think it also maybe addressed the loneliness that people felt. Uh, by having uh, a voice talking to them on a regular basis that that appeared to know them. So that's just my theory, but they did find that it was effective. However, right now the technology is not here uh, in this in this format. It may be available in other formats. I haven't researched that yet. Okay. So thank you. What's your next? Well, that sounded that sounded very interesting. Wow. Right. Right. Yes. Reminds me of another Hopeful. podcast that we kind of did. <clears throat> Isn't it fun how our verbs kind of interact with each yes, other? Yes, they do start nicely. overlapping. Yes. And it, yes, it's very, very nice. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> excuse me. Mm -hmm. So, Dustin talked about habits, and he said, oh, you yes. know, yes, and he said a habit is in any act that we engage in automatically without thinking about it. And I started remembering I talked about habits when I used to teach, and I said, okay, I want everybody to close their eyes and grab your hairbrush. Hmm. You have your hairbrush in your hand. Now, go go ahead and start brushing your hair. And people would start from the left, the right, the middle, whatever. But I noticed, and, and I stopped them, and I said, why did you – I said, open your eyes. Why did you start in the middle? And one person would say, well, that's where I always start. And another person says, I asked, why'd you start on the right side? Well, that's where I always start. And why'd you start? And again, it became habit forming um, that they just automatically do that. And they told me they didn't realize that they were doing that oh. until I asked them. And so they said they just naturally grabbed the brush and whoop, automatically start with whatever side that is from their head. And Dustin talked about he said, you remember the old adage or the old saying about anything you do for 21 days becoming a habit? <laughs> and he says, yeah, well, okay, that's pretty much been discredited. Oh, and as, I know. as you and I have talked about, I think it's down to 17 days in a row now or something like that. But um, so forming those habits, it, it takes uh, a, a few days to do that. But anyway, right. he says, building productive habits then is a matter of repeating a desired behavior over a long enough period of time that you start doing it without thinking. And he says, but how do you remember, remember to do that? And what about the things that you don't need to be habits? The one, <laughs> <laughs> the one off the events, you know, you're like taking your paycheck stubs to your mortgage banker or making a particular phone call. 
Um, or much like, hey, starting our podcast every Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> he says the trick to reminding yourself often enough for something to become a habit or just that one time that you need to do something is to interpret yourself or interrupt yourself, mm -hmm. I'm sorry, mm -hmm. in some way, in a way that triggers the desired behavior. And then again, he talked about the wonderful things about triggers. And he mm. says a trigger is anything that you put in your way, much like I talked about the suitcase before, to remind you to do something. The best triggers are related in some way to the behavior that you want to produce. Okay. And I thought, okay, what kind of triggers do I have? And I know that every time I get ready to jump out into the, go into the car to drive somewhere, I always grab my wallet, I grab my keys, I grab my phone, and I touch those three places on my pockets. Phone, keys, wallet, I'm good. I can go anywhere I need to go because I can lock the door, start the car, and boogie. And, and that's just my habit. I also know that when I go someplace and it's like the store, um, I will take a picture mm. of that of that grocery list that Inga and I have done. Uh, wow, that's so smart. And because I have my phone, I've got my triggers. And when I get to the store, I go, oh, what am I doing? What am I looking for? And I go, oh, don't panic. <laughs> just open up your phone uh, and look at the picture that you just took because the list is right there. And so it's, yeah, it's, uh, I don't know. Anyway, I, I find- Can I? Go ahead, I'm sorry. Yes, no, yes, you can. Uh, whenever I go to the grocery store, having forgotten my list, somehow ice cream always ends up in the cart. It is such a good reminder, isn't it? <laughs> I never have ice cream on the list. But you always but when put I it forget in the... <laughs> the list, there it is. I like that. <laughs> okay. Okay. And Destin says, but anything that catches your attention and reminds you to do something can be a trigger. An alarm clock or a kitchen timer is a perfect example. Mm. And he says, when the bell rings, you know to wake up or take the quiche out of the oven. And he says, hopefully, hopefully you remember which trigger goes with which behavior. <laughs> right. Right. Yes. And right. we. And how many appliances or things do we have now that have buzzers and whistles and oh, right. alarms? Everything yeah, does. Everything, it seems. Yeah. Yes, that's all right. So that's where he went. Okay. And I have some more and I will turn it back to you. And we will come back to Dustin in a, little, in a little bit. Okay. So this is my third research project. And now we're getting more advanced in time. I think we're in about 2023 now for this one. Okay. This is an investigation of phishing awareness education over time, when and how to best remind users. So phishing is not fish fishing, as in standing by a creek bed and... Uh, throwing your uh, line and worm in. This is P-H-I-S-H-I-N-G, uh, phishing emails and security uh, windows for nefarious people to get into our systems. So Benjamin Reinheimer et al. studied, uh, since more and more organizations are because they need to uh, rolling out security awareness and education programs about what to look for that's suspicious and how to respond. Uh, they were looking at uh, how often do these need to be presented and what's the best way to present them. So they studied 409 employees in a German public sector organization. Nice thing about public sector organizations and research is they really don't have a choice. They have to participate. <laughs> <laughs> so they, um, they t uh, researched four types of reminders over time. And I'm not going to go into detail about all of these, but what they found is Awareness performance about security aware, awareness here remained for up to four months, but was totally gone by the time six months had gone by with mm. most of the of the program. So in this case, the uh, the key is to remind uh, do a reminder program every six months. You know, you're looking for those phishing emails, but at times goes by, you, you relax a little and you've clicked on it and it's too late because then you realize, oh, what have I done? Yes. Um, but the second part of the study, as a reminder, was what types of reminders work most effectively. And they found if they used a combination of inter, uh, excuse me, videos and interactive examples, then those lasted another six months. So you could stretch hmm. out the training to a year rather than every six months. So Nice. So I love when we're using technology for good and not for evil. Yes, absolutely. And, 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 
fishing. Okay, so I was I was thinking about having my waders on and out there just right. You know, I, I, I figured that line. several people might be looking at it from that perspective. Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> Dustin talks about how to make a reminder work for you. And I'm going to go back again to my very sophisticated spiral notepad. <laughs> right. Because, because what I would do was I would go when I would go to work, I would already have a list of things that I need to be doing because the night before, as I'm leaving work, I would always put down in the spiral notebook. And remember, the spiral notepad was the one that had the um, two halves of a page, well, had a page and it was divided in the middle with this one line that would right. go from the top to bottom, right? Right. So I had two sides to work from, and I thought, oh, this is kind of cool because if if I just used a I, – I saw a steno pad, and I tried that. And just having the elongated mm. things, I tried to put too much information in that. Oh. So I learned I, – I devised a shorthand for my little spiral notepad. So for the left half and the right half, it would be two columns of different information, but it would all – at a glance, tell me exactly what I needed to mm -hmm. do. Mm -hmm. Because I would draw a line and then I would write down who I was supposed to meet with, who I was supposed to ask questions to, what questions to ask. Mm -hmm. And my shorthand was I could look at it at a glance and tell me if I had done it mm -hmm. and it was complete, if I had done it and it was incomplete, or if I had done it and I was asked to come back at a later time to do it. And I had a mechanism that says, okay, this was done, this was done, this was done. Not crossing things out mm -hmm. because I wanted to make sure that I knew who I talked to, what time I talked to them, when I talked to them, and, and all this other information. Mm -hmm. But as Dustin says, how to make a reminder work for you. Right. And it worked wonders. And I mean, think of it, e event planners, wedding planners, those kinds of individuals. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Man, I... It, it worked well for me. Anyway, he says computers and ubiquity of mobile mm -hmm. internet connected devices make it possible to set up automatic triggers for just about everything. And he's right, because there's so many apps now, as you just said. Right. There are apps for everything. He says desktop software like Outlook will pop up reminders on your desktop screen, and most online services can go an extra step and send you some reminders, some text messages. See, that would be helpful for me. Okay. And he says, just the thing to keep you on track. And he says, for example, Sandy, uh, I guess this app called Sandy, just, just does automatic reminders. And I'm thinking, okay, I can hear the reminders because I can hear my mom. Oh. <laughs> when I was going to school, don't forget to do this. Don't forget to do this. Don't forget to do that. <laughs> and as I would grab for my books and things at school, I would I would hear her in the back of my head. Did you bring your homework? Did you good for <laughs> did her? You your work? <laughs> <laughs> so so it says Sandy here, but I'm gonna say mom. <laughs> good idea. <laughs> in good. the back the of my mom head. App. Was, yes, yeah. right. <laughs> Put your sweater on. You make me cold to look at you. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and he says automated reminders can help you build habits, but it can also help you remember things that are too important to be trusted even to have it. So much like you talked about with the pills, he says diabetics who need to take their insulin mm -hmm. and a HIV patients who whose medication right. must be taken at an exact time right. in a precise order. He says phone calls that have to have to be made exactly on time and other crucial events require triggers even when the habit is already in place. And so, yeah, it's, yeah. It's all out there, and oh my goodness, we 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 can all just I don't know find ways to to help us get there. I'm looking at the clock. It says okay. twenty three forty three. Whoa! So I will turn it over to you, my friend. Well, I, uh, I want to say just a couple things that are important to remind yourself of every day, okay. in whatever format you choose. Uh, number one, don't rush things. Life is going by so fast anyway. We're going to get there. And uh -huh. Don't don't rush yourself. Number two. Uh, shape your future by the decisions you make today. Ooh. And so even though we're staying in the present moment, remember that the present does work itself in the future. And by that, you know, get that exercise in today. You, you know, eat the right thing when you, when you can. Don't, another point, don't compare yourself to others. Uh, read books you enjoy. Uh, you can't do everything today. And lighten up. <laughs> I love these. <laughs> oh, and don't be a wimp. Somehow that was thrown in there. Speak up for yourself. Don't be a wimp. Oh. <laughs> so, good things to remind yourself of every day. I might make a different list, but hey, 
you know, we each have our own. So yes, we do. Yes, so we Wayne, do. Um, with that in mind, since we're running close ish, uh, or uh, what's your, what's your trivia qu question answer? Okay, it was my general question. Your general question answer. And it was, and and I'm sure there's a lot more, but it's things, right? But but Cassandra, and this was from Frugal Family out of the UK. She asked, or she offered, what are 10 ways to remind yourself to do something? And we've kind of already alluded to some of them, mm -hmm. but she says, one, set an alarm. Yay, that's an easy one. Two, use a calendar. Wow, what a novel idea. We have calendars. <laughs> we, we've all got these paper calendars and we've got these calendars in our phone, right? Yay, novel idea, use a calendar. Okay. She says, number three, use to-do lists. Uh-oh. And I don't like the to-do lists because every time I scratch off one of those honeydews, it populates with two more. I'm like, no, Ooh, stop it. how that works. It's got a <laughs> life of its own. <laughs> she says, have a magnetic notepad on the fridge. Mm -hmm. Keep a pen and paper in your bedside cabinet. Mm -hmm. Yep, I found that handy. Me too. She says, use screenshots, much like I said about my phone, taking you, a picture. Yes, and I take pictures when I'm traveling of the hotel room number. Because ah, oh. if you're going to several hotels, you go, which one am I in? Yeah, was I in 301 or right, 1472? Right. I don't right. know. Exactly. She says, use your phone. Yay, we've said mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Automate life where you can. Mm. And I thought, okay, yes. Nine, there's an app for that. <laughs> of course. <laughs> there's an app for everything. And last, lastly, use a daily planner. <laughs> okay. And I thought, okay, back to my spiral notepad. Okay, and what was your trivia question for you as a youngster? What did you, you do to remind yourself? Then that I still do today, although yes. COVID hand washing ruined it for me. That is, I'll write it on my hand. <laughs> really <laughs> right on my hand and like i said covid hand washing kind of interferes with that yes. process <laughs> i thought you were going to say you had a rubber band on your wrist no no that was one sticky notes are another one but for me write it on the hand it's right there all day i look and say i need to wash that hand <laughs> <laughs> okay all right Hey, and we are at 27. So again, I will bid, bid it to, in your direction there, my friend. Well, Wayne, thank you as always for another fun podcast. And thanks for the folks who listen to us and keep us encouraged. Absolutely. We thank hope you, it works everyone. both ways. Yes. Thank you, everyone. And we'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Thank Bye -bye. you, Sheila. Thank you, Wayne.